Welcome to the Princess Power Hour, where we show you how to go from pauper to powerful by transforming your health, your wealth, and your relationships. Here's the princess of podcasting herself, Natalie Thomas. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we are going to have so much fun. I've been chatting with our guest for a little while, and she is awesome. She's got a lot of stressors going on in her life, but that's kind of cool because you know what? We all do, and we have to be able to put up with that in business. And we're going to be talking about how a productive business coach can help you. All right. And even if you don't have your own business yet, you are going to be able to learn great things here to put into place as you start taking steps towards that business. And it can be a side hustle. That's how all of my businesses got started. And one of my businesses grew to $2.2 million in sales in two years as a side hustle. So before we start, I'm going to tell you my amazing, wonderful lip color of the day. And we are here in the holidays, and I have Fly Girl finished off with gold glitter gloss. Now, a lot of times I go with our um, glossy gloss, but here's what's so fun about my lipstick. And those of you that are just listening and can't see this, I'm kissing it. I'm smudging it. Okay, Suzanne Dwyer's our guest today. Suzanne, have you ever seen beautiful red lipstick like that that you can just drag your finger through and it stays there? Never. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest? It is fantastic. Okay, now my gold glitter gloss does kind of come off a little bit, all right, but not the red color. That is going to stay on for 4 to 18 hours. I can eat usually through it twice. I can kiss my husband all day. I can demo smudge it, and it is still there looking gorgeous, which is really nice. Now, uh, Suzanne has kids, okay? My kids are all grown. But when you're a busy mom and you want to look good when your husband comes home and not have to think about it, this stuff is fantastic. So you can get that over at www.lipstickkissesandlove.com. It is lead-free, wax-free, FDA-approved, um, GMO-free, vegan. It is um, cruelty-free, which I think is very important. And when you pick out a color, you always need to grab a gloss because the gloss is the secret sauce that locks it all in. So Suzanne, before we get started, I'm going to read everybody your bio and I'm just going to tell them a quick story that you can be thinking about because I'm going to tie in some questions for you. I have a little new adventure, everybody. My first wedding anniversary, it's coming up, Cayetano and I got married. Um, a year ago this coming Saturday and as our anniversary present to each other we are buying a puppy and she is a Siberian Husky she will be nine weeks old when we pick her up she is from Champion Lines and typically when you buy from a breeder these days you get a pet puppy and you have to have it uh, fixed within usually six to eight months we are paying more to be able to breed her and here's a fun thing Suzanne because it's for our anniversary we decided to name her Annie oh how cute isn't that fun okay so we are picking up Annie this Saturday actually on our anniversary which is almost an accident that it happened that way the breeder wasn't available um, in this last week but because I am an entrepreneur at heart, I turn everything into a business. And for those of you that are listening, why? Why do I turn everything into a business? Because it's tax deductible. Okay, now we can't play around, we can't lie, we're not cheating. It's really gonna be a business. Okay, I wanted a puppy and I'm getting a business, okay? I wanted to buy lipstick at a discount and it became a business okay for $55 you can sign up for this lipstick and you can get it at 20 to 50 percent off without making it a business but if you make it a business it's tax deductible so that's my little spiel for that let me tell you about Suzanne and then we're gonna get some tips on how a productive business coach can help you and how it can help even with my puppy business right absolutely okay so here we go um, as the productive business development coach, she focuses on the three main facets of people's businesses. They are business structure, 
marketing, and sales. She helps them take a deep dive into their business and create new strategies that work and cut spending while also fixing other deficits. Now, folks, that last part was my favorite part, okay? <laughs> yes, looking at your business is great, but fixing the deficits, that is gold. That is invaluable. And I am so excited to talk to Suzanne about this. So welcome and thank you for joining us today. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Happy and, to be here. Well, thank you. And I'm going to make them tell you where you are from because I cannot pronounce that without you guys laughing at me. So, <laughs> and so I'm originally from New York, um, but I actually relocated to Fairhaven, Massachusetts. Um, the ocean was just calling me. I had to. <laughs> oh, it sounds so nice. But I promise you when I say it, it comes out two shits. And no matter how much I <laughs> that, um, yeah, it doesn't work. So anyway, I'm going to be a good girl. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Not really. Tell us how you got started because you've had a journey. You started out in one area and you've transformed yourself. I have. I have. So I started in marketing 17 years ago. Mm. I worked for um, a home improvement company, handling all of their marketing, um, taking care of all of their marketing management. Um, and then I converted, I hit a pivot in my career um, that allowed me to open my own marketing firm. Um, I did that for 10 years. And then I realized I've been coaching people in their businesses for 10 years. And now I was offering coaching and fulfillment. And I noticed that I was not able to get as much done by offering both. So I kind of pivoted a little bit and um, kind of focused in on the coaching aspects only, where now I can focus in on the problem areas. Um, because I would talk to clients all day long and we would talk about, okay, so our marketing is doing great, but our sales team can't keep up, or there's a problem in my taxes, or I'm getting a tax audit because I made too much money and I, my accountant didn't know how to handle it. And there's all of these different issues. So, you know, I realized that there was a major need where, you know, business owners didn't understand what their marketing was doing. Uh, I was getting phone calls with people telling me, okay, yeah, I got my reports. They look great. And I was like, um, they do. Are you sure? And they didn't understand what they were reading. They really didn't understand it. Um, so I'm like, okay, so you guys need to learn how to actually read your marketing reports. I'm like, because I got the same marketing reports from the marketing company that you're working with and your numbers are horrible. You have no positive return on your investment or, um, they're looking at their, at their sales team. They're like, Oh, our sales are doing great. And I'm like, are you sure? Because you're booking, you know, this many appointments and you're selling this many. Um, and then the follow through is just not there. And then you have, returns back to these customers because you know the service wasn't completed properly mm. and all of these different aspects were coming into play um and also i work with businesses that are kind of sitting there and just like kind of at that like plateau area that they just can't get past that like barrier that they set for themselves and they don't know how to get to that next level um and that's where i kind of come in with that strategy where i help them set it up I help them implement it. Um, I also offer a little bit of consulting if they need it. If it's something they can't fulfill in house, I work with fantastic referral partners that I can actually mm. make sure that it can get fulfilled elsewhere, but it's with a company that I trust and to make sure that they're doing the best job possible for them. Wow, that is absolutely awesome. And you know, you said something there that just rang so many bells for me, um, reading those reports. And as business owners, I want to encourage all of you, we do have to keep our fingers in the business. Now, I have created many of my businesses with the intent that I don't have to be there to run them, okay? Mm -hmm. You still have to read reports. You still have to check on things. And even when we trust people, I call it trust but verify. Now, I found a little boo-boo that I had been making, and I found this only yesterday, Suzanne. I wrote a check for an insurance, and I entered it in QuickBooks, and I noticed that they, didn't, they had not corrected my address. So I wrote the corrected address on there, tried to call them, didn't really get through, so I emailed my insurance agent. She said, Nellie, this is the policy that we canceled four months ago. 
And she says, well, maybe they're still billing you because you got an audit. Let me check on that. And she had canceled. It had been verified canceled. And they were still billing me. And they were going to bill me through the end of 2018. And I had paid for four or five months without realizing. And if we had not caught that because of the address, I had would have been paying for two workman's comp policies. Is that ridiculous? It is, it is, but it happens more than you think. Um, most companies, because they're so focused on what they're good at, which is which is where I want them to focus. I want them to focus on, you know, their business. Um, but the problem is, is that you can't focus on your business and be good at what you do and be the accountant and be the bookkeeper and be, you know, all of these different areas. You can't fulfill it all. You need to properly delegate to like a really like good team people that you feel confident with. Um, and if you don't have like an in-house team, like there are, I mean, literally every single um, aspect of your business can be run virtually. At this yes. point, you can literally run everything from your phone. Um, so, you know, there's the ability to, no matter where you are, you can absolutely run your business. Um, but the problems that come in are a lot of times is, checks are written or automatic withdrawals come out and you forget about them. Um, especially automatic withdrawals. I like, I plead with you, any business owner that is watching this, check your automatic withdrawals because I guarantee there is probably some kind of a service that you signed up for at some point within your career that you don't use. And it's just, right. you're and right. It's just charging you every single You're time. absolutely right. And I saw that yesterday and part of what, you're saying ties in. Now, uh, I did my own bookkeeping for years, hired an in-house bookkeeper many years ago. And because of our move, we had, I'm going to say maybe two months where basically um, I was writing the checks, but not really entering things. My QuickBooks wasn't hooked up yet, that kind of thing. And we're kind of playing catch up. And now we're working out a system with my former bookkeeper in California Mm -hmm. to, you know, but one of the things I've always said to her, if you see an unusual charge, let me know. Well, okay. I happen to be looking at the account and there's a $27 charge on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I've seen other charges in the past that weren't accurate, you know, and we've dogged it down, but you have to weigh out how much time am I going to have to pay somebody for, okay, $15, $20 an hour mm -hmm. to dog down a $27 false charge. Okay. And so you have to weigh those things, but she had just gone ahead and entered it. She didn't ask me about it. And I said, that's not a legit charge. But the other thing is exactly what you're talking about. I saw that we were still getting charged for grasshopper for something I probably haven't needed in three years. Yeah. And there's so many charges like that, that are probably on your account. Um, the most that I think I found for a company, um, so far was $6,200 a month that they were spending on unnecessary things that they no longer use, all these systems that they no longer use within their business. Um, and they were just being residually charged because they, somebody signed up for it and they forgot about it. And they hadn't used it in years. And I was like, listen, so the nice part about my job is that I find my fee in misallocation of funds. So nine times out of 10, when I'm coming in to work with a company, I find my fee. So I basically work for free because I'm wow. helping you reallocate funds where they're not being useful, oh, where you're not oh, able to God. actually make a positive turn from it. And I help you reallocate it into areas that make sense for you while building a positive ROI where you don't actually have to lay anything more out of pocket than you are currently right now. Oh my um, gosh. I love that. that. So necessary. It's so necessary. You know, and that's where I got started. This podcast got started because I have a five DVD program mm -hmm. for housewives. Okay. And it's about how to budget, how to save money from what you're already spending. And then we throw in things about relationships and about business. But I teach these women how they can save two to $300 a month on what they're already spending. Mm -hmm. Then how to wisely reallocate that money. And one of my passions is telling them, hey, you could start a business with that money. Absolutely. And, you know, when I learned it, it was probably, oh, close to 18 years ago now. When all of a sudden $50 a week was freed up for me, 
that was unbelievable back in that time in my life. I was living in a mobile home. Mm -hmm. I was feeding my kids and not, I was spending $90 a week on groceries and not having enough money to buy treats for them, anything like that. And all of a sudden to be spending 40, have twice as much food and that extra $50 is life changing. And back in that day, I would have never dreamed that I could have a business that grew to $2.2 million in sales in two years. You know, <laughs> thank you. It, it's, it's a huge blessing, but my thing is not to brag on myself, but to encourage other women out there listening or even men that if I can do it, you can do it. I, there was nothing special about me other than I am tenacious, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I love this being able to find your fee, finding $6,200 a month that a customer was spending, that's a lot of money. Now, now what kind of um, monthly budget did these people have that they could be losing $6,200 a month and not realizing it? Their budget was around $20,000 a month for marketing, advertising, and, um, and sales boosts, which basically the sales boosts was sales trainings. Um, and the sales boosts weren't doing anything. Um, team building and leadership was one of the biggest problem areas um besides of course mis misallocation of funds um but team building like the marketing team and the sales team weren't working together and when they don't you have this instead of this and your businesses need to work together your departments need to work together um and a lot of that i bring forward and i make sure that it's dressed um that company had, you know, large spends. They had, you know, they were a, a $6.9 million company. Mm. Had the funds to be able to spend. But the problem was is that, you know, they weren't spending them in the proper ways. So I taught them how to spend them in the proper ways. And they went from, um, you know, a, a, you know, not really a small company at, at $6 million, but mm -hmm. they went up to a $2.3 billion company. Um, really? Massive change. Yep, just by reall reallocating those funds. And okay, I got to write those numbers down. So, can you repeat them for me? That's impressive. <laughs> sure, six point nine up to one point three. Wow. Yeah. Billion. Billion. Wow, that is, and that was from your direction and assistance, girl. Yeah. That is amazing thank you thank you it was, it was a lot of work to get there <laughs> um was, but what period of time did that take you working with them to get them redirected okay so um because we had to do a, a really big overhaul within the company we had to mm -hmm. do an overhaul in the business structure an overhaul in sales including hiring and firing mm -hmm. and an overhaul in marketing which changed from an in-house team to an outsourced team mm -hmm. um it took a span of two and a half years okay Okay. And that's, I mean, that's certainly worthwhile. Um, I have a, a very dear friend. She's going to be on the show at some point. And she was an executive in, I want to say it was Hurley, but I don't, it was one of those surfer brands, mm -hmm. um, the clothing line. And she took them from about 6 million up to about 300 million. And now she, she wasn't a, um, in the same field that you were. She was in, actually an executive on their team, but she's amazingly gifted. When she was a kid, she used to study, study military strategy. So everybody, that's a, a future guest coming on our show. Um, Debbie, um, I know her last name starts with an H and I know her name and I dearly love her and her last name is Hiljin. Debbie Hiljin will be on our show in the future. Um, we are going to take a super quick commercial break. And when we come back, um, Suzanne, I want to ask you about this idea of plateauing, how you help businesses that have plateaued. So we will be right back, everybody. Are you looking for ways to make additional income? Chanceandwater.com has three great ways to get up and running fast, making more money. We have a salesperson training school that teaches you all the ins and outs of selling and how to sell the hottest water health products available. We also have a dealer program and an affiliate program, all with different benefits and responsibilities. Go to chanceandwater.com website and look for the dealer tab at the top of the page to find out more about how you can start making money fast. Okay, and we are back. We're talking with Suzanne Dwyer, and we are talking about how a productive business coach can help you. 
Now, so far she has shared how she found $6,200 a month worth of waste in a company and pays her own fees um, through saving people, um, helping them save on money that they were already spending. We've talked about how she has helped a business grow from 6.9 million dollars in sales to 1.3 billion okay that is not an easy task and i am so impressed now suzanne you mentioned before about businesses that have plateaued that they're kind of frozen what kind of a strategy do you take with a business like that so it's really depending on the style of business. Um, so I can actually give you an example. Um, so I have a, um, a contractor that um, got to a point where he realized that, that there's only so much that he can still do in his business. Um, he has the team in place, he has the, the services in place, and he has the, the accommodations in place, but he, everything still relied on him. Um, the whole business still relied on him. Um, and it was truly, truly stressful. But he realized he like hit this plateau area. He's like, I can't grow any bigger. Um, I can't, you know, if I if I pull out a little bit from the company, the company's going to fall apart without me. Um, and he just felt like he was just at this place where he's like, I can't do anymore. I'm stuck. Um, so we actually came up with strategies um, based on his business structure, um, and we kind of looked at his overall. And his overall was he was wearing too many hats in his business. Mm. So we looked at, okay, so how are we going to delegate properly out with these things that you're currently doing to take the weight off your plate? So if we can do that, now we can focus some of your time on working on your business instead of in your business. Mm. Um, so so important. It is. It's necessary. It is absolutely necessary for any business owner to spend at least two hours, at least two hours every single week to make sure that you are taking that time to spend on building your business, on working on your business and not in it. Um, so I worked with him with building up that. Um, and then from there, we went into a new sales strategy and into a new marketing strategy. And the marketing strategy and sales strategy usually go pretty hand in hand with each other. But also it was creating something simplified for the sales team. And so the biggest problem that most contractors run into um, is they run into, okay, so how do I know what my sales team is doing? How do I know my sales team is doing a good job? Um, so I'm like, okay, so we're going to digitize everything. So your estimate forms are going to be digital. Your contracts are going to be digital. Your estimates, everything is going to be digital. And it's going to back up to the back end of your website. Your, your sales agents are going to log into that website, and they're going to put everything in. And you get reports every single day. Mm. At closing time, you get a report sent directly to you. And I helped him actually find a team that was able to implement that to make sure that he was no longer going to be running into those issues. Um, so then we were able to create a new marketing strategy that was able to um, show the customers that you know now the systems are simplified. We're able to fill the time with helping you more than sitting down and, and filling out paperwork um, when you have an estimate. We're going to fill out the estimate right in front of you. We're going to make sure you have that estimate and we're going to answer any questions you have. And they get mm. an immediate copy of that estimate while the sales agent is still there. Which the nice part about that is that if you're still in-house, it increases the likelihood of somebody buying if they actually can see the numbers right in front of them. I would agree with that. And I'm in a time in my life where I am getting a tremendous number of estimates regarding this new house that I've moved into. Mm -hmm. And it is so frustrating to me when... Somebody's standing there and they say, I'm going to get you the estimate on Tuesday and mm -hmm. three to six weeks later, I still haven't gotten it. I'm having to dog them down for it. I got an estimate for a fence the other day. The guy quoted me on the wrong fence. I, you know, told him he already knows how many feet he, he knows how much that fence costs. You take your error and you say, I'm sorry, here's the correct number. No, it's been days, weeks, you know, week and a half, whatever. I still haven't gotten the number from him. I had two plumbers in here to quote me on a bathroom probably three months ago. No estimate. You know, how do they run their businesses like this? Exactly. And how frustrating is that for you as the consumer where oh, yeah. now you're yeah. going to go on Yelp, you're going to go on social media and you're going to yep. give them a bad review saying yep. Yep. Spend my time out of yep. my day. Yep. And then you come out to my house and give me an estimate. Yep. And I still don't have an estimate. I don't know how much you're charging. I need somebody that's able to complete this job. And if you had somebody come in 
give you all of the information, make sure that you know exactly what you're getting and you have a written estimate in your hand. It's like while you're Absolutely. sitting there, you, Absolutely. Like, you know what, you guys are so Absolutely. I'm done. Oh, I'll give you two other examples because I'm totally agreeing with this. I had one guy get up on my roof. He um, took videos. He took pictures. He mm -hmm. sent all that to me. Now, he didn't give me the estimate the same day, but he gave me a, he gave me an estimate on the repairs. It took him a little bit longer to get me, you know, he's like, you know what? The cost of the repair on the roof is so much. It's so close to what it would cost you to replace the roof. You're better off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Took him a little longer to get me that number. But compared to another guy out here, this man came out four different times. So that's time away from his business. Okay. Twice he brought five of his team. Mm. <laughs> and it has I been imagine pulling five people off of a job. <laughs> I, I know. I'm thinking the same thing, but he's doing it. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And you know, as a businesswoman, you know, this is costly, right? Mm -hmm. Three months. I still have not gotten that estimate. So it's a lose lose. Mm -hmm. But had he gotten me the estimate, when are we going to go with the guy who was able to be Johnny on the spot or the other guy that kind of portrayed he didn't really know what he was doing in having to come four times and bring all his team and, you know, you know, it's kind of exactly. obvious, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, c customers don't want their time wasted. Nobody wants their time wasted. Yep. If you're yep. a customer or a business owner, nobody wants to waste time. Right. Um, so keeping your business running more efficiently because efficiency is key. Yes. Um, any business can be really self-running if you set it up in a strategic way. Yes. Um, well, you and I both know when it comes to certain businesses, you could literally work from anywhere. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yes. matter where you are. No matter what country you're in. doesn't matter if you're sitting on the beach, sipping my ties, you can run your business. And that so, is the kind of business I want to teach people as absolutely. possible. That's the kind of business I want to build. I don't want to build a business that is a job for me that I have to be there babysitting every day. Correct. Exactly. And, and it's, and it's able to be done. Um, and I teach people automation. Automation mm -hmm. is key. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's so much that I teach people and we're talking like I work with big businesses, but I also work with small businesses. I've worked with people that are independent. Um, mm -hmm. I work with people that have uh, multi-level marketing companies. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to be putting together a boot camp specifically for multi-level marketers mm -hmm. um, because you know it's it's necessary for you to know how to get yourself out there. Besides hearing the whole, well, just talk to your friends and family and say, hey, can you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to hear that anymore because you know what, mm -hmm. your friends and family are like, um, you know what, no, mm -mm. no, mm -hmm. no more favors. <laughs> like I don't want to hear it. But, <laughs> It's about, you know, building, it's something that's automated, building a tribe, building, you know, yes. a community of people. And, you know, it doesn't matter what size your business is, you need to kind of go through the same type of steps. Um, you know, obviously it's a little bit different as far as, you know, how to market and where to market mm -hmm. according mm -hmm. to your business, but mm -hmm. it all comes down to the same thing. And 90% of it is automated. So if you can automate 90% of your marketing, advertising, and sales. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? Absolutely. I completely agree. Now, I want to go back to something you were talking about earlier, because you said that when you were helping this company go from um, 6.9 million to 1.3 billion, it included some hiring and firing. So I'm going to throw in a tip for everybody listening. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this principle comes from Alcoholics Anonymous. I am not an alcoholic. I don't drink. I haven't been there, but I learned it from a friend of mine. And it's called Principles Over People. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I tend to be a very compassionate person. I'm a very giving person. I genuinely care about people. And so when you have a single mom working for you and she's really dependent on that income, it's hard to fire that person when they're not doing their job. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when you look at it as the company, you're serving the company by firing that person because it's putting too much damage to the company by if she's not carrying her weight. And this is just an example, but it's one that I've had to do. Okay. Or that she's causing difficulty with other people. Trust me that that expression, one bad apple will spoil the whole bunch. You better believe it is true. Absolutely. Okay. They will commit mutiny on you. They will be talking behind your back. They will be undermining and nip it in the bud. There's an expression, be slow to hire and quick to fire. Now, I 
have a tendency of being quick to hire. I've hired people on the spot on the first person I interviewed, but I also learn from my mistakes and I teach about them so you can learn too. (laughs) That's my little two cents there, Suzanne. Absolutely. Well, it's really necessary. I mean, I have a rigid hiring process and um, something that I teach the companies that I work with will actually teach you guys what I go, what I do, what I actually do with my companies and what i say is that all interview processes have to be an absolute minimum of three interviews before hire Mm. and when i say three interviews i mean they come in person to bring their resume they come in person for a sit down they Mm. come in person for another sit down and all of those times they better be dressed in business appropriate attire the way that i see it is you always will dress for the position that you want and that's it. Um, you need to show presence. You need to show that you're willing to be a team player. You need to show the willingness and ability to be out there and to come sit down and actually be on time. You be efficient and you will learn everything you need to know about that person within three sit downs because the first sit down, they're bringing in their resume. You're asking them a couple questions and you learn a little bit about them. When they come back for the second sit down, they're a little bit more laid back, which means they're going to be more open to talking to you. They're not going to be like, okay, yeah, no, I got to get this job. I got to get this job. Mm -hmm. So after the first sit down that you have with them, you put them at ease, which means by the second time that you're sitting down with them, now they're at ease enough that they're going to tell you what they, what you need to hear. Mm -hmm. And they're going to show you what you need to say, Mm -hmm. whether that be good, bad, or indifferent you're going to know it by the third time you sit down with that person. Now they're really calm. They're really lax. And now they're going to show you who they are as a person. So now if they curse a lot, you're going to see it by the third time you sit down with them. If they have a problem making eye contact, you're going to see it all three times, which means if they're having a hard time making eye contact with you, they're going to have a hard time making eye contact with your customers. Yep. Customers do feel that that connection with people when there's eye contact being made. So you want to make sure that that's there. You're also going to learn about articulation. You're going to see how well they articulate, how well they can talk to you, how well they can talk to other people. And um, salespeople especially, um, I'm talking specifically for sales. You know, when you're dealing with salespeople especially, you really have to understand these people are going to be going into, into your customers' homes. They're going to go into your customers' businesses. They're going to go and they're going to see your customers on a regular basis. And you need to make sure that the person that you're sending is the person that you want to represent your business. If you are sending someone that is, you know, showing up in like pajama pants and like a hoodie, not quite what you want to portray with your business, obviously. We had one that I was having to explain to her that she needed to wear a bra. Now, this was after she was already hired. And and I <laughs> don't go around looking at women's breasts, so I had not ha- noticed. My husband took me aside and said, oh, please talk to her. She needs a bra. <laughs> and she was just so shocked and mortified and absolutely convinced that she did not need one. And I, I was trying to explain to her about nipple covers, that something was needed to take care of the headlights, you know. <laughs> so, and this was a salesperson, yes. Yeah, and I mean, again, it comes down to like, you know, how do you want your company portrayed? Mm-hmm. Is the person that's walking through your door the way that you want your business portrayed? Um, and, you know, I've seen all kinds, literally all kinds. Um, I'll give you the, I think the best example that I've ever seen is um, when I was running my marketing firm, um, I was offering in-house training for sales teams. Um, So this way I had like a roster of salespeople that I could bring in, Mm -hmm. which was really great. Um, But I had somebody show up um, and she showed up in pajama pants with a ripped t-shirt and slippers. (gasps) the first interview. Was she on drugs? I w- couldn't really quite understand what was going on, but I'm like, like, why would you show up to a job or do you like this? Okay, like, I've had crazy, but that tops crazy. Um, yeah, it was, really. It was kind of unbelievable. I was like, what's going on here? So this and, wasn't even for you to interview. This was for your client to interview? Yeah, they showed up to me because I was interviewing for the client. And okay. I was like, what is this? And she's like, well, I figured the only time I'd have to get dressed up is going to be when I actually sit down with the client. I'm like, are you kidding me? 
Like, no, absolutely not. This is a job interview. Why would you show up this way? She's like 17 um, years old? Like, that's crazy. She was 32. Um, <gasps> so I was like, you should know better. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I was younger than her at that point, too. So I'm like, you should really know better. Um, but, you know, you get all kinds. You know, you, you get, you know, I had a, a kid come in, kid. As a kid, he was 19 years old at the time. Um, shows up for a job interview for a sales position. Um, walks in, he's dressed appropriately. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, okay, so you're dressed appropriately, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but he showed up 10 minutes late. I'm like, that says a lot right there. Mm -hmm. And then, and honestly, I'm like, mm, already mm -hmm. bad taste in my mouth because you showed up late. But he walks in and he throws his keys on my desk, and I was like, hmm, okay. And um, he, I was like, so let me ask you, like, can I have a little bit of a background on you? Like, so why are you applying for this job? And he's like, well, my father says that I have to or he's cutting me off. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's kind of crappy. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, do you think I could have your, your dad's number? And he's like, well, why? I'm like, because I'm just kind of curious on, you know, why he felt like this was a, a good interview for you. And he was like, oh, okay, sure. So I called his dad right in front of him. I'm like, yeah, dad, you need to cut him off. Like, straight out, need to cut him off. Like he, it's time he puts his big boy pants on. Like he oh literally told me in the interview that you're gonna cut him off if he doesn't come for this interview. So <laughs> got the kid in all kinds of trouble, but you know what? Like it, it needed to happen. You're doing him a favor um, in the long run. You are right. A little bit of self love <laughs> coming from a completely outside source. Um, but you know, unfortunately, that's what business owners run into. Business owners run into people with low work ethics um yeah. especially like you know nowadays like the work ethics are like you know i'm demanding this much money and if i don't get this i'm not working um and when i started working i was working for five dollars an hour mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and and it's dramatically changed since then of course but mm -hmm. you know i started working and i was like 12 years old five bucks an hour and i was like you know what oh, i started good. at under three okay and and when i got out of college I was making $3 and 33 cents an hour in management. Mm -hmm. And I had a husband and a baby I was supporting at that point. Oh my gosh. But yeah. see, that's, that's the difference. So we get it. People that are in business now typically get it because they usually start in a really low place and work their way up. They don't start with, you know, all of this money because if you that's have right. all this money, why do you need to start a business? That's you typically right. don't. So everybody starts from someplace and the harder you have to work, to make your business happen, the harder you have to work, it gives you more passion. It gives you more love for what you do. And you know, it's, it's an absolute key to love what you do. If you don't love what you do, you're doing it wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wrong. Absolutely. No, I completely agree with you. And I'm just, I've got so many hiring stories, you know, people that <laughs> falling asleep, two of them falling asleep on the first day on the job. Another girl, it was her fifth day on the job. She's literally got her head on the table. She's drooling on her leads. Okay. <laughs> and she's, we're in glass offices. I had this exquisite glass and, and cherry wood offices. And I looked up, and her, her head's down on the table and I go in and I tap her on the back. She, you know, puts her head up and I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm entering my leads into the computer. I said, your computer is turned off. Oh, okay. That's about an hour and a half into her shift. Right. And I said, you know, I think maybe you didn't get enough sleep. Why don't you go home, sleep, and then call me back and tell me if you really want this job. Okay. And of course, then she calls back with some excuse that, you know, she had taken some, you know, cold medicine or something. And she never did come back. And she, we found, I don't know why these were in the fridge, but she had been corresponding with some corresponding with some guy in prison. I didn't find these. I didn't open them. I didn't read them, but there were all these letters that somebody found. In the <laughs> so yeah, that was five days in and oh my god oh so, okay and, but you know again every business owner has these stories and mm -hmm. it's crazy mm -hmm. as it is because mm -hmm. like it's like really if you don't work what are you doing how are you paying your bills how are you know what, and what gets me are the ones that make the appointment for the interview the same day as the interview and they don't show up yeah. or you offer them the job and then they tell you that they really want to stay on unemployment you're like oh yes thank <laughs> you for that. wasting my time you know <laughs> I really needed that. I've got somebody leaving in two weeks. I really appreciate that you did that to me. Yeah. yeah. 
I love those. I love those. I think I got the the whole, do you think you can pay me off the books because I want to keep filing oh. unemployment? I got that question more times than I care to think. And I'm like, uh. yeah, no, I run a legitimate business. Thank you very much. My books are clean. I'm not going to, you know, risk my business for you to cheat. Exactly. Yeah. And do we want to hire somebody that's willing to cheat the government either? No, not really. Not at all. If, not if they're going to cheat the government, they're going to be stealing our stamps and everything else that they can get their hands on. Everything that's not glued or stapled down, they will take. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But that's another reason. Like I've I've had that experience. Of, I mean, every business owner has, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But because I had so much experience, you know, being able to bring that into what I do now is just tremendous. Because I'm dealing with a lot of new businesses that haven't dealt with this yet right. or they're not sure why they're dealing with it and they're thinking like they're the only one and I'm like, right. I was like unfortunately everyone deals with this mm -hmm. um but it's about a weeding process if you vet them properly if you weed them out properly there's ways to do that you do that and you will make sure you will never have another bad hire no, I think your process so valuable. I love your your three in person visits. I mean, that's me yeah. learning something there. I've hired people over the phone. I hired that one guy on his first um, first interview, and he and I literally started him that day. Okay, and I really like the guy. I mean, he had a personality through the roof. Turned out he was ADD. Okay. Oh. He couldn't retain anything. He was all over the place. Mm -hmm. And next thing I knew, he's quitting to continue his schooling or something that in the interview he had presented, you know, oh, the job is the most important thing and my schooling can be for and after and this and around and, you know, I'm going to do both and it's all good. But, you know, you spend the time and the money to train and it's, oh, no, I have to take this class by. Yeah, exactly. And, and you will find that out the three sit down it's either face to face or even a virtual. So if you're hiring, hiring somebody that's a distance away and you're hiring them as a virtual assistant or whatever, you should always have at least three interviews. Um, during those three interviews, you learn a lot about that person. Great you lesson. Everything you need to learn. Great lesson. Well, we're going to shift the conversation here for a minute and we're going to talk about social media. Tell us what you think about people in social media today. How are they doing with their marketing? Okay. So, um, a lot of the social media companies that are out there, a lot of the marketing firms that are saying, Oh yeah, just post, just post, just post wrong. Um, you need to make sure that you're posting native content to the right places. So if your primary focus is on LinkedIn, so say your business to business, mm -hmm. your primary focus should be LinkedIn. If you don't have a strong presence on LinkedIn and your business to business, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. um, you need to make sure that you're posting through locations that you're going to be working and finding the people that you need to find. Um, Facebook is a really key area that everyone should be focusing on um, because Facebook is new yellow pages. They are becoming the new YouTube. They are the new Twitter. <laughs> they are the new Snapchat. <laughs> they are literally focusing in on all of these different facets. As you notice now on Facebook, you now have stories. Well, where did stories come from? Stories came from Snapchat because Snapchat was being utilized heavy. Well, guess what? Now you have stories on Facebook. Um, Facebook is actually rapidly becoming a TV channel, which people don't know about. Really? They are. They are. So right now, you know how there's um, there's like Sling, there's Direct TV Now, all of these different apps are coming out, which will allow you to actually stream TV live. Well, Facebook has come up with something as well. Shocker. <laughs> so Facebook is actually coming up with something where now you can live stream sporting events. That's what they have right now, but they're looking to expand out to make sure that you can have everything. You're talking like every single TV channel out there, which gives every cable company out there competition. Also, every satellite company out there competition. Oh. Um, yeah. So, and you know how Facebook likes to kind of keep up with the times and especially with the marketplace, how they took on OfferUp because OfferUp was taking off and was doing really great things. So what did Facebook have to do? They got right in there. I do and like Facebook marketplace and, and I tried some of those others offer up and there was another one mm -hmm. and you know, with my big move, you're moving too. So you can relate. And especially yeah. me moving across country, I booked a 25 
thousand dollar truck to get all of you know my business and my home across here and that's a nightmare of a story that they lost 25 of my boxes at least 25 of my boxes they took three weeks longer than they told me they would not return my phone calls they still will not return my phone calls i will be filing a better business bureau complaint about that but i had to divest of so much of my stuff truckloads of stuff mm -hmm. in order you know to make it here and um yeah, offer up definitely helped. Um, excuse me, no, the the marketplace. Marketplace, you know? yeah, it does. It does, and people find what they're looking for. You can list business information up there. You can list apartments. You can list houses. You can list everything. So it takes on Craigslist, takes on offer up. Um, so every time that Facebook sees a new thing that's becoming popular, in. friends, they almost like pounce on it. I didn't realize that. Yeah. I, I mean, it's going on right in front of my face. I didn't pick up on that. Right, right. Most people don't. Most people don't. So, um, you know, one thing that I learned over the years is do your research. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of research out there. There's a lot of information out there, especially with social media. Um, and every single day, the trends will change. So one day, LinkedIn might be more popular than Facebook. Facebook might be more popular than something else. Uh, Snapchat may be more popular that day. That day, literally that day. So like day by day by day by day, it changes. And you need to kind of kind of keep your... your Periscope kind of came yeah. up and then, you know, Facebook started allowing live. So... Exactly, exactly. So and then all of a sudden you notice the Periscope is kind of like dwindling a little bit because mm -hmm. Facebook Live is taking over. Mm -hmm. So all of these different things. And now um, podcasts are going to be available completely through Facebook where all your live feeds, everything will be available through Facebook really so, yes oh tell so, me tell me tell me more about that how, so how do we they haven't that? released all the information yet but they are going to be having podcasts directly through Facebook um, they're they're really kind of they're talking about that right now um, there's a lot of information about um, you know the new up-and-coming things but every time Facebook sees something they want to mimic um, because if they, they feel that it's something that's going to make a big impact, mm -hmm. they want to jump on that bandwagon before the bandwagon gets too big. Well, I've got to learn about this one because I'm, I'm now one of my side things is I'm teaching um, the Expert Podcast Academy yep. to people on how to podcast. Yeah, um, that's fantastic. So, wow. People well, need to know how to podcast properly because I've seen it done wrong so many times <laughs> well and i talked to so many people that they've thought about it they want to do it they have no idea how to start and right. it's like here i put it together they get you know everything from a to z and you know make it simple for them and here let's do it let's get it going you know so that's amazing that's amazing because honestly i work with you know the, all different styles of businesses and mm -hmm. um i do work with coaches also mm -hmm. um and when i work with coaches they're like well i don't know how to really like podcast and I don't know mm -hmm. how to do like a live feed without looking like a, like mm -hmm. a tool. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, it's okay because we all look like a tool when we're on, we're on mm -hmm. live feed because mm -hmm. typically we're going to walk around we're like, hey, hey, look at us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's so weird. laughs> like we all look like that. It's okay. Um, but you have to be just, you know, you have to be okay with what you're doing. And, you know, when it comes to podcasting, you need to be professional, but you also need to make sure that you've got a good message that people actually want to engage with and they want to hear about it. Because if you don't, like nobody's going to watch it. Well, delivery is important too, you know, yeah. and I've watched things on YouTube that the guy is reading from his paper and he sounds like a robot and <laughs> you sit there and go, and why is does this guy have, you're like, really, you know, and you've got the other one that's reading from the teleprompter and honestly, they just literally sound like robots. That's really the bottom line. And you go, okay, this is going to last about, you know, five minutes and or you know, what is it? The 15 minutes of fame, I guess is the um, expression. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But if you don't have a big enough audience to actually have the fame, nobody's mm -hmm. what you're putting out there. You need to put out something mm -hmm. that's well, and you know, I definitely teach people how to grow their audience, how to get their guests, how to leverage their guest social media, all that kind of thing. And then I have a whole thing in there about confidence. What people don't realize about me and like you would never know, I'm shy. Like at my core, I'm shy. Mm -hmm. And I have learned to project my personality, have fun with this and let go of it being about me. Yeah. You know, not everybody's going to like me. That's okay. Yeah. You know, I, I, post things on Facebook that people don't like. Yeah. Well, 
okay, that's not my audience, so what? Exactly, exactly. Well, so that actually brings up a really, really, really good point about social media. Um, I typically suggest that you have two Facebook profiles. And the reason why I say, really, business and personal, when they cross over, can be mm -hmm. dangerous. Say that one more time. Business and personal, when they cross over, they can be dangerous. Okay. So you could post up a silly picture of your kids. Someone takes mm -hmm. offense to it. Now they're bad mouthing your company. Mm. You can post up your political views, mm -hmm. it's your personal opinion. Mm -hmm. But when you're in business, it doesn't matter. You're mm -hmm. not allowed to have an opinion. Mm -hmm. Right? So your personal is for your personal. Your personal mm -hmm. is for your kids' pictures. Your mm -hmm. personal is for your friends, your family, the people you get along with. And your business is for your business. Mm -hmm. You have your contacts, your business contacts, the people that mm -hmm. want to connect with you mm -hmm. through your business. Keeping those two things separated will allow for you to still be you if you want to post on social media mm -hmm. without having it carry over and affect your business. And the, and I'm actually going to give you a, a fantastic example of this. So there was this huge case going on up here um, where a girl was actually um, bullying her boyfriend into committing suicide. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was not far from here. Actually, it happened in Fairhaven. Mm. Um, so, um, you know, this was going back and forth and back and forth. And there's some people that have like, you know, a really strong belief in one way and other people that have a really strong belief in the opposite. So, you know, you have this bullying back and forth where, you know, she was pushing and, and, you know, so on and so forth. And he, unfortunately, he ended up committing suicide. Um, so now, you know, the, everything came back where, you know, she was not found guilty. So with that, um, someone that actually I, I network with, he actually turned around and, and shared it and said, you know what, like, finally, it's about time. And, um, so this, this guy came on and actually like put a post like the, and the comment mind, you know, pardon my French, but it was, of course, the fat bastard is going to agree with the psychopath. Mm. And I was like, whoa. Um, but he, and, and we're on iTunes. So we got to be careful with the words. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, so basically, um, yeah, so it came back and he, of course, you know, reacted and he typed something up and he was like super angry and like, how dare mm. you and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then he came back about 10 seconds later realizing, huh, you know what? That's probably not a good idea. Hmm. So he deleted what he said. Mm -hmm. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Within that time, that guy took a screenshot of that post. And made it, it viral. His job's website. Posted it to his job's Facebook post. The Facebook page. Sent it off to corporate and almost got him fired from his job. Are you kidding? 10 seconds. Wow. That's it. That's all it takes. So that's why I'm so vigilant on telling people you have to keep your business and personal life completely separated because when you don't, bad things can happen. <laughs> well, I will say that I do have, um, I have a chance in water Facebook. I have a lipstick kisses and love Facebook. I have a princess power Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's about all the Facebook. And then I have my personal and my personal, I do, almost addictively share um, political things. You know, I don't, it, there's no point to ever talk political stuff here on the show. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have strong opinions and, and I kind of know that it has the potential to hurt me. You know, I mean, it's obviously at least half the people out there are going to have a different opinion. And I realize that, yeah. but I feel so strongly that for my personal Facebook, you know, I kind of, I try to rein myself in, but sometimes it's a little hard. So it is, it can be very, very difficult, but that's why I say like, if you have your personal Facebook, that the only people that are on that are going to be your friends, your family, the people that you actually know face to face, mm -hmm. you're close mm -hmm. with them and you know that they're not the type of person that's going to take information and use it against you. Mm -hmm. That's what, those are the type of people you have on there. The, you know, the other Facebook is specifically for business purposes. Mm -hmm. you, know, you share things, um, you do your 10 four ones on that. Like that's where you put your, your feed. That's where you put your info. That's where you put the stuff that you should share based off of your business style. And I haven't heard this expression, 10 four one. What is that? Okay. So basically the 10 four one is the breakdown of what you should be sharing on a regular basis. So per week you should be sharing 10 
feeds, whether it be video, which I typically suggest video because it usually has a little bit more of a um, of a potential for penetration. Um, so 10 things that, that kind of relate to your company. And it could be any shares that you'd like, but that should be shared to um, your Facebook group or your Facebook page or both. Um, but make sure they're a little bit different. Um, and that could be shared through LinkedIn, that could be shared through um, um, through Twitter, those can be shared in different places. So the 10 different things, like for me, because I'm in coaching and a lot of what I do is business and life, so I kind of incorporate the two, so I do some things with inspiration as well as also things with business. So the videos that I share are business related or life inspiration related. Um, that's the 10 items that you share from an outside source. The four is going to be your the four things that you want to focus on for that week. So those four things can be where you are interacting with your audience. So four times per week you should interact with, the, with your audience. That time means whether you're doing um, you know one live feed a week, um, a podcast per week, um, and doing a blog post per week, um, and then doing like an actual Facebook. Um, uh, or I'm sorry, not a Facebook, a LinkedIn um, connection, making making another connection. So that's four unique things that you're creating. And then the one is your call to action. You should have one call to action per week. Otherwise, you overload and overbog people and they don't want to be bothered because they just want the information. Wow. Well, this has been absolutely awesome. And I've actually let us go a little bit over time because it's been so fascinating. You've just been amazing, Suzanne. But you have to tell everybody how they can reach out to you. And I know that you have a special offer for our listeners. So go ahead and tell them about that, please. I do. I do. So I am offering a free strategy session. Um, I typically charge $25 for a strategy session um, to actually evaluate to see if you're a good fit with me. Um, but anybody that is actually watching this, um, I'm actually offering to waive that $25 fee um, so that you can have a free strategy session with me. And you can find me at um, www.suzannedewire.com and you can book your appointment right online with me. Well, thank you so much, Suzanne. I appreciate all of that. And everybody, I am Natalie Thomas. This has been Princess Power. And we have been talking to Suzanne Dwyer. And she has just been sharing absolutely amazing things about how a productive business coach can change your life and help you grow and expand your business. So please reach out to her. If you found this show helpful, please share it. And we're on everywhere you can think of, Twitter and um everywhere else. Usually it's PP princess power. So there we go. Thank you and have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to the princess power hour with Natalie Thomas. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit princesspower.com or on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter at PP princess power. Until next time, work smarter, not harder. Have a question for your host of Princess Power Hour, Natalie Thomas? Contact us at www.princesspower.com or tweet us at PP Princess Power.